Today, we're gonna to be looking at how to shorten a suit jacket. So this is actually a suit jacket of mine, and I'm gonna be shortening it to a more petite length. So I'm looking in the mirror here, I've got it on, and I am going to take a piece of Taylor's chalk and just kind of look at this chalk line in the mirror here and see like, what does that look like? And then I'm gonna start to flip it up. What's a little tricky about suit jackets is this curve right here. So when we are folding it up in the mirror, we're not gonna be able to mimic that curve very well. We'll have to wait until we start getting into the actual alteration before we can truly see what that curve will look like. But let's just start by rolling up to my chalk line there. Hmm. I'm gonna hold that in place. I'm gonna compare it to the other side. And then I'm gonna put my arm down next to it and see what I think about that. I think I like that. Perfect. Next step, we're gonna jump over to the cutting table and start measuring this out all the way around. We're back over at the table here now, and we're gonna measure this chalk line I just made in the mirror. Alrighty, so we're at two and a half inches. Perfect. Write that down. Remember it? Because now we're ready to jump inside the garment. My favorite super secret way to go inside of a suit jacket is to go through one of the vents. Often, one of the sides of the vent has a top stitch. I think that this may have been the way that they actually got in and out of the garment during production. So if you've got one or two vents, choose one that has this little bit of top stitching. And we're gonna open that, seam rip that open carefully. And then we'll start flipping the jacket inside out through that little hole. So you do wanna make that hole decently big, but try not to go down into either the point of the vent or the connection to the outer at the bottom, just to make your life easier later. Big enough to get the whole jacket through. Oh. Let's see. An alternative, if you don't have a vent in your suit jacket, is to simply open the connection between the lining and the outer along the edge. And then you can make that hole as big as you want. So either way is fine. We're just trying to open some section of the lining that we can then machine or hand stitch closed later, but will be hidden on the inside. So you choose, any point is good. All right, now I'm reaching inside and I'm reaching all the way to my curve in the front and pulling out half of the jacket through this vent. Okie dokie. So we're gonna see a couple of things here. First, you'll notice along the hemline that there are tacks holding the lining to the seam allowance, anywhere that there is a seam on the outside of the jacket. We're going to cut those tacks. We will be putting them back later, but you don't need to mark them because we know that they're occurring on the seams. So that's where we will put them again later. This holds the lining up inside of the jacket when you're wearing it so that you don't have that lining dipping down when you're wearing the jacket so that you can see it from the outside. I know everybody's had that happen before when the uh, structure gets a little weak. So we will just Carefully seam rip those and release that. Perfect. Okay, now as we lay this out, we can start to really pull that curve out. And as we do that, see now how you're looking at the front? Does that curve look familiar? That is gonna be the front flap of one side of the jacket. Something else you'll notice is a little bit of stitching here that's holding the lapel and facing together on the outside. Again, we'll have to cut that so that we can lay everything out flat, but we can put that back again later. Okie dokie. So as I pull this out flat, hopefully this is starting to look familiar. The next part gets a little tricky, so I'm gonna use my chalk to make it very clear where the stitching is. We have our front curve again, 
and the stitching is actually going right here where I'm putting the chalk, okay? Then the stitching comes down and this is our bottom hemline. However, the jacket itself will be folded and pressed a little bit differently. And we will get into that later, but that has to do with those tacks that we just cut holding the lining up to the seam allowance. So one more time here, what you're seeing is this curve with its small quarter inch seam allowance, which allows this tight turn to come out crisp and clean when we fold it to the outside. And then the stitching ending right here. Then we have stitching going down and coming out to our regular half an inch seam allowance, kind of a standard seam allowance that we would use for any stitching to connect our lining to our outer. Now that we've done this, we're ready to start marking out the amount that we are gonna shorten the jacket from the inside. I wanna take a quick sec to level set here because this is a really tricky part and it's really hard to get oriented inside of this jacket. This is what you're looking at, okay? We are on the same page here, but I'm gonna flip it back out so that you can see where we are one more time. At any point during this process, it can be very helpful to re-flip the jacket. Okay, normal jacket, we understand where we are, what's going on. We're gonna go back inside of this hole, reach all the way to this curve, and pull this half of the jacket from the vent to the front curve out. So if you have two vents, just go from that vent. Okay. Now, here we back, here we are back again. And this is the same orientation that we started this with. So, looking at our chalk marks again, we're gonna lay this out as flat as we can. And I like to start right here where the lapel facing meets the lining. That's where I'm going to put my first two and a half inch mark. And I'm gonna do that from the stitching line. So you'll notice that there is a fold line here where the garment has been pressed. Don't worry about that right now. We are putting in our new stitching line. We'll get back to the fold line later. That is two and a half inches shorter. So stitching line, and we're gonna have a seam allowance that will go under that, but we'll worry about that later because we're not gonna cut that quite yet. I'm also now gonna put a straight pin through there just to keep this all level as I'm moving backward and forward. Let's move back in the direction of the vent, continuing to mark. As I'm doing this, I'm pressing the fabric and the lining flat so that when I measure up, I don't have any wrinkles caught underneath where I'm pinning. I'm gonna mark that first, and then I'm gonna throw a pin in there. I'm gonna do one side at a time. So we're going to complete this side before we move on to the other side. Again, you'll notice I'm measuring up on the seam allowances or the seams and I'm using those essentially as anchor points visually so that I know everything is in line. I really like to use my seams as pillars in this operation. Okay, and we are almost all the way back. This one will be a little bit tricky because of course we have half of the jacket sticking out there. But I'm going to, oh, we have one more tack that we're going to release there. Here we go. One of the things about these tacks in the suit jacket is you will know where to put them back because when we put the jacket on, if we see the lining dipping out anywhere that it shouldn't be, we'll know, oh, that's where attack goes. So don't worry too much about remembering exactly where those tacks go. We will be able 
to plot them later. Also because they're on seams, again. So here we go. All right, we've got all of this measured out. If you would like to put a couple of extra lines in between, measuring out again from that seam line, two and a half inches, because that is how much we're shortening it. We can do that. Great, awesome. Let's move up to the front curve. Marking this out is gonna be the most important part because we really need these guides as we're going forward. So what we have to do is make a decision here. We're back to looking at the front curve of the lapel. So this is our vertical edge, the part of the jacket that overlaps in the front and buttons somewhere up here. So this part is not being altered at all. We don't want this to be narrower or shorter or anything. We're only shortening the length. So we're gonna take these markings and we're gonna transfer them up the two and a half inches, keeping the integrity of the curve. How are we gonna do that? Let's start right down here at our point and let's go two and a half inches up. That should be right in line with the pin that we made earlier. Good, all still good. Now, let's measure this. This little curve and diagonal line down to our seam allowance measures one inch. So let's go straight up from there. Let's make a mark and then let's go one inch up from that line, just like that. Okay, cool. Now, we're gonna match that, let's say 45 degree, just like that. And now we're gonna come back and go two and a half inches up from our curve seam line. Bang, there we go. All right, you seeing it? Here, here, here. I like to leave that extra little lip in there because this was sewn here as well. And you'll understand that better when we go to fold the garment later, but all of this stitching is important. We wanna keep all of that exactly as it was, just transfer it up. The last step is to look at this curve. And really for this last section, we're just gonna try to mimic that up top here, kind of sketch it in. Again, this is the front edge of the lapel that is not changing. So we're coming up to zero there, we're meeting it and we're curving down to our new section, which is boom, boom, and boom. Okay, let's throw a few pins in this, and then we are ready to start doing our first little bit of stitching. Okay. Before we get under the needle, I'm gonna show you as much as I can of this section. So this is one whole half of the jacket with all of our markings and all of our pins. You'll notice that we have not cut yet. I prefer to do the sewing first and the cutting last. So we are gonna start all the way over here at our front curve and make our stitching lines, just mimicking the previous, and we're gonna keep rolling all the way through until we get back here to our vent. Then we will flip it out, test her out, and then get cutting. All right, let's get under the machine. We're beginning our stitching on the vertical edge of the curve. So as you can see, it's still oriented in a way that we can understand pretty easily. And I'm gonna begin my stitching exactly where it already was before I start coming down this curve. Now take it slow here on this curve. We want it to be as smooth as possible. So let's just keep it slow and steady. And then remember we're going to our stopping point here. Great, okay. Now we're gonna come back up for our diagonal down to our new hemline. Uh, don't forget, of course, you wanna take the pins out as you're sewing, but I do like to wait until I get pretty close. Now, this is just a straight shot to the vent, but you wanna make sure that you're keeping all of the fabric really nice and flat and smooth. So take it slow because as we know, the presser foot is always pressing the top edge of the fabric that we can see at potentially a slightly different rate than the bottom. 
In this case, the lining is more slippery and the bottom is more tacky because it's a thicker fabric. So we shouldn't have a ton of trouble, but I always just like to make sure that I'm feeding with both hands on either side of the needle and going slow and trying not to build up any kind of fabric in front of that presser foot. If you start to see that, lift it, smooth it, and keep going. These are the little things. You know, there's so many little things in sewing that add up to a beautiful product in the end. And all of them are just these tiny little steps and feelings along the way. Also, you'll notice that I can't lay the entire jacket out flat because of course we're sewing from the inside. So just every time you hit a seam, take a moment to smooth, orient, and pull more of the jacket out so that you've got it lined up and ready to be sewn when you get that way. I'm also feeling under the fabric and feeling for where the seam allowance is on the other side so that I can try to be matching up those seams, the lining and the outer. Did I say in the beginning of this video that this was gonna be an advanced one? Spoiler, it's advanced. All right, as we get closer to that vent, we start to get a little bit poofy, but that's okay. We can do it, just hold it all nice and flat, almost there. I'm holding this pretty taut right now to keep this all flat and I'm going to go all the way through this hem allowance uh, for the vent as well. Okay, let's see how we did. I've flipped this side of the jacket inside out. As you can see, curve is not perfect. It's a little bit bumpy. And again, that's because we haven't trimmed any of the seam allowance. You really have to. You have to trim it, but before we do that, I just wanna take a look and make sure that everything looks right. So I'm gently trying to force out some of that curve, uh, rolling it between my fingers and trying to um, just get it to come out a little bit and start looking at that. The other thing that I'm gonna look at is making sure that we did that stitching correctly. You'll see this is where that extension of the curve ended. And then we get this kind of weird little pocket. Very interesting, but one of the reasons that I only like to do one side of the jacket at a time is specifically for checking. So let's jump over to our not altered side and see if that's right. And in fact, once it's pressed, look at that. Same pocket, same extension of the stitching, ending, and then jumping up into this pocket that will eventually be folded together to allow movement and will be evened up as we get closer to our vents in the back. So we know that we are on track, we know that we're good, and we know that we are ready to cut. So let's get back inside. The last thing we're gonna do before we get cutting is we're gonna mark out this seam allowance so we know exactly where we're gonna cut. So up here on the curve, remember, it's only gonna be a scant quarter of an inch. So you're gonna mark that in. And then I'm gonna mimic this kind of 90 degree right there and jump down. And then we've got our hemline here that goes straight back to the vent, you remember. And so we're gonna do a half an inch below that. Perfect. Now, if you wanna mark this all the way back to the vent for your cut line, absolutely be my guest. And if you are gonna do that, I would suggest putting pins in between the stitching line and the cutting line. That is gonna be the best way to stabilize this as we get cutting. So I am gonna throw a few in myself. Again, that's in between the stitching line and the new cutting line, just to hold everything in place as we go and make for a nice, clean cut edge. It doesn't need to be exact. I'm saying half an inch. I'm probably marking a little bit on the bigger side of that. That's okay, that's not a big deal. The measurements and the stitching are what matters. The hem allowance shouldn't. All right, almost there, almost there. 
great. Alrighty, here we go. Great. And then I'm gonna come up from here actually. Great. And right along my cup line. I'm going to switch over to the vent side and meet up with my cut over there. A little bit wily. Make sure you're not getting any fabric stuck underneath. Alrighty, there we go, that's it. So I'm gonna take my pins out and then flip to the outside again to press this in place and actually check all of these shapes and angles and sides. So let's go. Okay, so I'm standing here at the iron and I am pulling all of my little curves into place. And again, I'm kind of using this undone side to mimic over here and get our curve the same. And then I'm gonna press that. I'm kind of smoothing it with my fingers and then pressing it into place by keeping this little bit of facing and the lining is coming about over half an inch up here, but it's meeting. You see how the lining meets the edge as it goes into the facing of the lapel? That's how we're gonna press it as well. So let's come down here and start on the vent side. That's a little bit easier. We can actually fold this seam allowance in, because remember that's where it was top stitched. So that's where we actually opened it already. And we are just going to start pressing that down. Just like that. And as we're coming around, we're getting, that lining is getting closer and closer to the edge. Until it meets up right there. So we're just trying to pull this into a curve that makes sense and that is actually how we're going to press it. So this will take a little bit of maneuvering. I'm rolling the fabric in between my fingers and sort of curving it. This is one of the great things about suits and wool is that we really have a lot of flexibility here to get exactly the shape that we are looking for. So we're just gonna keep moving and pressing the fabric until it looks right. And these I want to match. And I wanna round that out a little bit more, make that a little more smooth. Now I'm gonna turn these two edges toward me and look at them next to each other. All right, this one is a little bit straighter, so I'm gonna make this one a little bit straighter. This is where those tacks inside really come in handy. We are just going to press the shape that we want into the garment and then use the tacks to anchor and secure that edge the way that we've pressed it. So that's definitely one of the 
more creative pieces of altering suits is getting to choose that shape and then just tack it in place and get it to stay. Okay. I'm gonna bring this one down again and look at them together. Let's get the back out of the way so that I can see them on top of this. Ooh, that is looking good. Great, awesome, okay. All right, now we are ready to put a couple of tacks in here and then move on to the other side of the vent. Now that I'm over here on the table, I'm just checking my curve. This is definitely the most important part now that our sewing is done, at least on this one side, so that we can really get everything aesthetically looking exactly the way we want. I know this is my opening, but for a moment, I'm just gonna pin it closed so that I can finish looking at our edge from the vent all the way to the front. So I can see here that I want about an inch of outer turned up as a facing. So I just pressed it there, but in fact, I'm gonna roll it a little bit further up and put a pin in there and I'm gonna press that again. And then that on the inside is where our tack is gonna go. Same here, just a little bit more and we'll press that. But remember, remember this pocket, that stays, that belongs. And then we kind of get into our lining and back of the jacket. So let's press that. This looks good, this looks good. Let's press this all one more time and then we will meet at the sewing machine to put our tacks in. So I'm gonna reach inside of my vent that is still open and I'm gonna pinch this section, both the horizontal line of seam allowance and the vertical line of seam allowance around this seam. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna reach inside here and I am pinching that and this seam allowance. That's what's gonna hold all of this in place. So let's get a really good look. You see how this is the horizontal seam allowance and this is my vertical seam allowance. These are the tacks that we removed earlier in the alteration. And I'm not catching any of the outer edge of the garment, only those two seam allowances crossing each other, perpendicular to each other. Now that I have a pin in there, let's flip it back out to the outside one more time, just so that we can test it. When I pull here, you see how that stays up? That is what's gonna keep that lining in place, the way that we have it folded and pressed. So let's just put a little tack in there. easy, and then test it one more time. You see that dimple from where it's holding itself together? That is the tack that we just put in, and that is what's going to keep that lining in place when we put the jacket on. Let's move to our next seam and do it again right there. Again, reaching into the vent, pinching where that is together, and I actually already put a pin in that one and cheated. But you see this vertical seam line and horizontal hem allowance. These two allowances are being sewn together. This is a tricky one. It's not complicated in the sewing nature. It's just complicated in the getting the right pieces of fabric together and not the wrong ones. There we go. Flip it out again. And again, pull on either side. Oh, look at that, we didn't get it. Good, let's go back in and try again. I'm gonna pinch here and pull this out. You see how that pin is just barely catching the edge of that vertical seam allowance? That is correct. So that's why it can be easy 
to miss it. So let's try it one more time. And then we'll test it again and see where we're at. Yep, I think we got it that time. Let's try. Yes. You see how that's holding in place? That's what we want. Awesome. Okay. The last thing that I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to close up our vent now because the other side of the vent, we're going to go through a different place in the lining so that we have better access to it. So I'm actually going to go ahead and totally finish up this side of the jacket by closing this vent. And again, just a quick, easy top stitch with a matching thread color will do the trick. And we're trying to get as close as we can to that edge, probably within an eighth of an inch if we can, and just running straight down all the way to the hem. Perfect. Awesome. Beautiful. All right. That side is done for right now. Let's get over to the other side of the vent and start shortening again. First big accomplishment, one side down. Next up, we've got our second side. So first, I'm gonna take a minute to level set and look at the work that we've done. So this is pretty cool. I love the comparison personally and uh, just giving myself a little progress report of here's where we were, here's where we are, and just making sure that I like the way everything's looking. And boy, do I. The only thing that I notice is that this vent will be shortened a bit. That doesn't bother me, but it's an important detail to keep in mind because the way that the vent is constructed, which we're about to go take a look at, does not allow you to extend it because the fabric isn't there. We'll talk about that soon. But all that said, love it, like it, Let's keep on going. We're starting back at the vent because this is the last new piece of this alteration that we're gonna cover. And I think that there's a lot of different ways to go about this, as with everything in sewing. But the easiest way for something like this is to just start removing the, the lining so that we can see the inside of this somewhat mitered edge. Um, Vents are a little bit tricky for me. I don't know if that's just me personally, but I always have a little bit of trouble reconstructing them exactly as they were. So I will admit that there are certain portions of this vent, such as here, that I may choose to carefully hand stitch back in place later. Though we want this new hem to look as identical as possible to the original way that this garment was sewn, except shorter, using hand stitching as a way to support that good mimicry is totally valid in my opinion. So I know that a lot of the time with the vent, I may end up using hand stitching to close that up in the end. So we'll go over all of that as soon as I get this opened up. Now, remember we're shortening two and a half inches. So I know that I'm going to lift the lining at least past the matching point to our completed side because I'm going to need to go up that high. And for me, I think I'll go at least another inch and a half or so. And then I'm going to come back down here and continue just a little ways this direction. We are going to hem this section exactly the same way that we did the other side. So I'm not gonna seam rip too far because we're gonna do the same two and a half measurement and our little, you know, graphing situation over here to do this curve again. So let's start here before we go back inside completely. All right, let's take a look at this. So vents can be done two ways. They have folded this up on itself like this but if it was going to be truly mitered, it could also be re-sewn diagonally like that. Again, let me show that to you from this direction. We can either fold this back exactly the way it was, following those fold lines, or this could be a mitered edge, meaning the 45 degree angle that is sewn often on the edge of a cuff sleeve. So let me see if I can actually kind of mimic that a little bit something sort of like that. We'll continue on with what they did 
but again, just two and a half inches higher. So just like the other side, we're gonna go from our stitch line, which by looking at the seam allowance here, we can see is a half an inch up. I'll mark that now, half an inch up from the edge. And just like the other side, we're gonna measure two and a half inches up from there. And I'm gonna take that to my first seam. Now I'm ready to go back inside the garment. I've cut myself a small hole here in the lining in a section that will fall in an area on the body that will be hidden later. We'll close that up last, but that's the way that we're gonna sneak in to visit this area this time. So I'm gonna reach in and pull that out. And again, we are looking here at our vent and you see how I've begun to mark the seam line and my two and a half inches up. We're ready to start pinning our lining back to the outer. But one thing that I, I wanna point out right here is, what is the other thing that keeps the lining from falling down? Meaning being able to show when you're wearing the garment. Just as a reminder, this is our vent here and this stitching is the previous stitching that was already there. This is where we began to seam rip so that we could start looking at the inside. You'll notice as I pull this flat, where the stitching is already connected, this is how it was already created, the lining is quite a bit shorter than the outer. This is what we call a self-facing, meaning that the outer edge of the garment is long enough to fold up on itself and be reattached to the lining so that the lining isn't too long or bagging down below the hemline with the addition of the tacks, of course, holding it in place. But this is an important detail just so that you are aware of it. And when we go to pin this stitch line, you can see now that I'm gonna pull this down to meet these edges together for that seam. And that is going to bunch out in the vent area because that is what allows this self-facing to fold up. All right, let's start pinning. Now that we've talked a little bit about this whole vent situation, let's start marking the rest of the hem and work our way back to that again. So here I've made a few marks from when we opened the lining Let's continue that a little bit further. And again, I'm gonna put this chalk line on top of where the stitching currently is. This section from the seam over, this section is still sewn to itself. So all of that is still fully constructed. And then again, I'm marking that two and a half inches up. And that is gonna take us all the way over to our other curve. Woohoo, we made it. And let's do this cute little maze of stitching again. So again, I'm coming one inch up from my new line and I am going to make it easy on myself and just line it directly up with the one below. There we go. I'm making that straight line because it helps me make the other diagonal and curved lines. So then I'm measuring two inches up directly from the curve. Okay, cool. I'm gonna take that all the way over. And then we've got our diagonal stitching line. Let me continue this make this a hard clear line, great. And then we're gonna do that 45 degree. Does that sound familiar? Perfect. And one last mark that I'm gonna make is I'm gonna come straight up and continue that straight line. That straight line is a barrier mark for me to remind me that my stitching needs to go this far, but that I'm also still gonna come back and do that diagonal line. If you need to remove these marks with the iron so that you're not confused, go for it. Not a problem at all. Last one, mimicking our little curve here. And we're going from the diagonal line and curving our way up. Just a nice gentle curve. Very easy. Great. Now, let's mark in that two and a half inch line for the rest of the hemline a little bit 
hard -er, so that we can really see that definition. And at this point, we could actually go ahead and do the stitching for this section, but I think I'm going to pin one of my sides on the vent. So the key with the vent is to sew one side, flip it out and check it, and then sew the other side, meaning choose the vertical or horizontal, check it, press it, and then do the other one. I personally don't sew both perpendicular angles at once. I never get it right that time, so I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna make a mark for myself at this seam line and say, Shay, sew to here. So that we can complete this half of the garment. And then I'm gonna come back over here and reset the vertical seam in exactly the same place, ending at my two and a half inch up mark, right there. So I'm gonna put one pin down and one pin horizontal, and that's going to help me get everything oriented. So again, just as a reminder, this bulge of fabric, correct. And we will orient after we have done this vertical seam, which is not changing anything, and this horizontal seam, which will complete the rest of our hem. Let's go sew. Here we are over at the sewing machine. Let's start with the section we're familiar with. We know that we're gonna start up here on the vertical edge of the lapel, sew down and mimic our edges down here. And then we're gonna take this new hemline straight across to that final seam before we get into the vent zone. So let's just do that quick little stitch. And again, we're taking that curve slow and smooth so that that will be nice and beautiful later. If you can do this without raising your foot, more power to you. And we are going to this cross section. That gives us that little bit of that point that we're mimicking from below. And then I'm gonna backstitch there, stop, and now come up to do our diagonal. And that will bring us down to our new hemline. Remember, we're trying to keep both sides smooth and flat. And we're sewing in the section where the lining is still fully attached to the outer right now. This is not the area that we seam ripped earlier. Just smoothing everything out as I go taking those pins out as I go, and also just making sure that I don't feel any other fabric getting bunched up or caught up underneath. I'm not forcing the fabric through. I'm just letting it go at its own pace, but I do want to make sure that fabric is not piling up in front of the foot. But you already know all of that. And then I'm going to just come through and stop. Now we're ready to move to that, resetting that vertical line on the far side of the vent. So now I'm gonna sew that. And the direction of my pins is my favorite way to give myself these indicators, start and stop. You can do that any way you wish. Just make sure that you have a consistent system for it because for me, when I move from the cutting table over here to the sewing machine, I can really lose my train of thought or forget what I was thinking when I was sitting over there. And that helps me because I know my system is this direction is go, this direction is stop. So think of a system like that to help you. Okay, we're gonna take this over to the iron and get it flipped out and pressed. We're over here at the iron. We have not cut yet, just like the other side. We're gonna flip it out first, give it a little press, make sure everything is looking good, no fabric has been caught or tucked in any weird way. I really like to do a lot of checking before I make that final cut. It takes no time to cut and virtually endless amounts of time 
to fix something that's gone wrong. So we're gonna give ourselves one more double check here. And again, remember, it's not gonna fold out exactly the way we want because we have not cut that extra fabric. So really, we're just getting it as far as we can to be able to check that edge. And this is gonna help us get situated to finish up that vent. So let's see here. This will be another opportunity for us to check against the other side. So you can do that a couple of different ways. We can do that by measuring or just laying the lapels on top of each other. And I think I will actually do that right now. So again, I'm using this like rolling between my fingers method um, to really get as much fabric out as I can. And then I'm leaving our you remember our little pocket section here, and just folding up enough of this facing so that the lining and the outer fabric seem to sit well against each other. We can always repress and repin before we actually put those tacks in. So don't worry too much about this. This is really just to make sure nothing big is popping out at us and looking unusual in any way. As you can see here, this is the section we have sewn back together. So we know that that's where our vent is going to end. And this is the section we have not finished yet. I'm just going to tuck this up inside and just fold it into place, mimicking the way that it was before. One of the things that I try to avoid doing is ironing before I sew because using those previous fold lines can be really helpful as guideposts. So two of the things that we're checking right now before we get back to completing this are the back vents and the front lapels. Both of those are separate sides that we've altered separately, but that should be exactly the same length. So let's check them and find out. Okay, so we're still a little bit far off. That's okay. We have the opportunity here to keep rolling this up until they match. I'm also going to make sure that the jacket itself is totally laying out flat. And as I roll that up, I'm going to make them meet. Perfect. I'm just gonna put a little pin in there for the moment so that I can move to the front to check that. And then we will come back here in a moment. All right, and let's take the lapel. Again, doing all of this before I'm cutting and before I'm really truly finishing and closing the garment allows us to make these changes as we go. Great. Now, even though we've got our bumpier side and our completed side, you can tell that once we trim that extra, we're going to be right where we want to be lengthwise. That's awesome. All right. Now, let's cut. We're back over here at the cutting table, and I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step of exactly how I'm going to finish this garment. Again, this is variable, this is personal, this is the way that I like to do it, but there are many ways to do this. So we're over here at the vent, and this will need to be closed up. This section was one of the first sections on this side that I seam ripped, and this leading into the lining, for me, is going to be the final section that I sew, and I am gonna hand sew that back together. So what does this mean? It means that I need to close up this lining hidey hole, and it means that I need to cut the rest of the seam allowance and press out my curve and tack my seams and complete everything on the inside before I do this last bit of work. So now that I've said all that, let's go ahead and flip this back out so that we can cut. We're gonna leave that half an inch of seam allowance just like we did the last time. We've still got some of our chalk marks in there because we haven't really pressed that much, so that's still there. And I'll just mark that just because it's easier for me. I'm bringing this cut line up just by measuring it. And then 
you can just barely see my stitching line there. So again, we're going half an inch down and I'm going to end at that seam line. That's where we stopped sewing our hem allowance before. So that's what I'm gonna cut now. Let's start at the curve. I like when you can hear that little extra <laughs> hump going over the uh, seam. And then when I get to this final seam where I know we've stopped stitching, I am actually going to cut straight down. Just like this. Before I continue on. Okay, I've got that out of the way. Great. And now I'm back over at my vent and I am going to continue cutting, but because of this extra fabric here, it makes it harder than cutting that straight shot there. So I'm just going to put back the same markings again, half an inch up for the stitching and then two and a half inches up for the actual shortening. And I will cut that as an individual piece separate from the lining. This is really just accuracy. I want to uh, trust the accuracy. And for me, cutting on a single level is the best way to do that. And I'm coming half an inch down from that shortening mark. All of these measurements should sound familiar. And then I'm gonna go ahead and continue on that same cut line. If you are comfortable cutting it all at once, Absolutely, don't let me stand in your way. I also keep all of my scraps, just as a general rule, until I'm completely finished with the alteration. It's something that always makes me feel better because I know that I can reference it, so I just like to do that. Last cut, let's flip over to the other side, and again, just continue to remove that same amount that two and a half inches, I'll mark that out for us. That two and a half inches up. Right along there. Great, perfect. Okie dokie. Next up, we're gonna press, tack, and close our lining hole. So let's meet over at the iron again. I'm back over here at the iron working on my curve. And since the other curve came out so smooth, this curve is bound to give us a little more trouble. See how it's not quite as smooth as I want it to be? I'm gonna go ahead and trim that seam allowance down a teensy bit more and really make sure that the seam allowance is even because that is a crucial player in how it sits when we're on the outside. So let's get a little bit more of that extra bulk out of there and try her again. Once we start pressing, Working with the fabric while it's warm definitely helps with its malleability in general, so that's really nice. This rolling that I'm doing too is uniquely helpful with wool. Wool is just, oh, it's just so beautiful. It's so adaptable and flexible and it's just such a good friend to the tailor, you know? Okay, I am really liking that. And again, let's throw that other lapel on there. What the heck? Give ourselves one more quick measure. Yes. Oh. It's, uh, it's lovely. It is lovely. All right. Press the rest of this hemline. 
so that we can get over and tack these seams in place and close up that lining. And we're gonna do that all right through there, okay? Remember, that's chosen as my preferred method going to be hand sewn. So everything else that I can machine sew to give a good, clean finish, I'm going to. So that is our next step. Just setting my lining one final time before I put those tacks in. Great. So I'm gonna reach in through my vent hole and I'm gonna pin this closed and I'm gonna pin these seam tacks. So let's reach here, my hand is right in there and let's pull that out. And because of our crease lines that we made with the iron, it should be pretty straightforward to fold this up and attach it to that seam. This tacking, it takes a little bit of practice. Again, it's not, the, the sewing isn't difficult, it's the orientation. And then I'm gonna move in this direction. Again, this is my hem allowance and this is my vertical suit seam and I am tacking that hem allowance to the vertical suit seam allowance. Good. And then if I come on up here just a little bit further, we're gonna tackle the lining. You don't have to pin this, I'm just pinning it so that I don't forget where it is. And then we're gonna go ahead and do those tacks and closing up this lining hole all at once so that all we'll have left is the hand sewing and of course, wearing this gorgeous suit. All right, let's go. Doesn't matter which one we start with, so I'm just gonna start with the lining. And again, what we're doing here is closing up the upper lining hole that we created to make it easier to access that hemline, specifically the area feeding into the curve. You can choose to seam rip as much or as little to access these points as you would like. For me, more is always better. I really like to have a good wide space to access the jacket through. Great. And now we're coming back down to those two tacks that we've pinned. Remember, we are not sewing the out, outer edge of the jacket. We're sewing two seam allowances together, and that is it. So once I get it under here, I've gotta be able to pull that pin out, but still hold these together, and that is always tricky for me. There we go, so close, just making sure everything is good and we will check the strength of these from the outside. But yeah, I can see that it caught on both sides. And again here, my finger is underneath, separating the outer edge of the fabric from these pinned allowances. See like that? A lot of little pockets and corners in these suit jackets. This is really a great way to learn every little internal detail about a suit jacket. And yes, I see that I believe that one has caught too. So when we flip it out, we should be able to see right away if those caught. And they did, I can see that dimple right there. And again, I can see that dimple right there holding that in place. Ooh, we are getting dangerously close, all right. All that's left is the hand sewing. Let's head over to the table. All righty, let's lay this out. So I've done a little bit more pressing just to clean up this lining and get all of our edges looking great. We know that our fronts line up, so we're good there. We're just finishing up the back. We've got that lining section closed. We've got our tacks done. All of that is set. Now, Let's take a look at this vent. We've got it open to about there, just before that seam. And 
I am rolling this up inside like this. Okay, but now what about that raw edge? Yes, so with the amount of seam allowance, which is only about a quarter of an inch, we're gonna fold that down and then fold it up. I'm gonna pin that just by itself for a moment and hold that in place while we get the rest of it together. Then I'm gonna push that down and gently set the lining on top of it. And then we're gonna do a little whip stitch to hold that all in place. As I've pushed that down, I'm gonna take this pin out, smooth under here so that the vent is nice and smooth. I'm feeling different little bumps and wrinkles with my fingers. So that'll be something that you'll just have to feel and move until it seems smooth. And then I'm actually going to pin in a very specific way, which is directly on top. What I'm doing here is pulling this taut, which means there'll be a little bit of fold over. You ever notice that with a jacket, the lining is, it's not sewn exactly to the shell. It's got a little bit of movement here like that, you see? And we're gonna do that too. So by putting the pins a little bit further up, we'll be able to sneak in between. That's where our stitching, our machine stitching ends. And we're gonna sneak all the way over to here. The last thing that I'm gonna do is pull that little bit out there. Yes, and just make sure that that is looking good. Okay. Great. As I finish pinning this corner in place, I'm gonna spoil another surprise for you. It's not quite perfect. It wasn't when it came and it isn't now, and that's okay. We're just gonna get that corner as perfect as we possibly can. But you'll notice before that when you unstitched it, it was probably, it probably had a chunk of wrinkled up fabric inside because even when they're doing this in the factories, they aren't, nothing is perfect. Everything is touched by hands. And I think that's something that we can just appreciate about this instead of really, really becoming total perfectionists. We can appreciate the handcraftsmanship of this. And this is the time to do that. All right, so I've got a piece of um, skein. This is wax skein in navy to match my jacket. And I have one piece doubled over, so I'm going to have two strands, and I've got a regular um, in-betweens. Those are my favorites. But the size of the needle doesn't really matter. It's more your comfort level. With sewing hand needles, I have always just done what I like or what feels right, but I'm very not particular about it. I've just pulled my knot right here to be hidden by the lining. So hidden, I can't even pull it out. And then we are just taking a little bit here and a little bit there. Make sure when you're sewing this that you aren't sewing all the way through to the outer edge. We are just attaching the lining to that self-facing. We don't wanna see these stitches from the outside. So just a couple of fibers on either side. Enough to keep it strong, but not enough to be visible. So this could be, you can call this any number of ways this stitch, you could call it a whip, um, you could call it a blind, Whatever you want to call it, just make sure you can't see it. I'm going to take that out. And as I mentioned before, I put the pin up here, and then I'm gently lifting the lining, and I'm trying to just catch that edge of the lining, not both of the doubled up linings, only this one. So that everything will stay clean and pretty. And if you imagine, this is one, two, three, four, essentially, layers of fabric, and we're only sewing together layers two and three and leaving one and four clear. 
All right, we're coming up into that corner now. So I'm going to take this pin out and just maneuver it to where I want it to be as flat as possible. And again, you can always use your iron to help you mold and flatten this into a beautiful crisp corner shape. But getting those stitches in to begin with is the best way to start. So at least get it sewn and then iron and manipulate. Yay, so close. I think we'll put one more on the corner. I'm gonna go all the way through and make that really nice and strong, yay. And then I'm gonna tilt this a little bit so that I can slide the needle through and come out over here. When you're doing this, make sure you pull just tight enough, not too tight. It's always a nice little balance. And then I am shifting the jacket around because I always sew right to left. That's just a personal preference and that's what's comfortable for me. With this stitch coming down the very bottom of the vent, I'm going through all of these layers. One, two, three, you see that? This stitch was initially visible before I took it out earlier, so it doesn't bother me that you can see those whip stitches. That, as long as the thread is a good matching color, is not a problem. And then, if you want, for bonus points, you can run along this edge too. And that, I'm gonna call this a tunnel. Don't know if that's the technical term, but we're kind of sewing in this tunnel, trying to catch the edges of it and make this one a little bit, it's sort of like a baby whip. Just wanna make it really, really hard to see. But again, these are the small details, the small hand touch of tailoring that though it may not always look exactly perfect from the factory, is that really what we want? For me, I like the little bit of personal touch and completing a large project like this with hand sewing is really, really meditative and satisfying for me. I, I like slowing down at the very end to appreciate the work and take the time to do these tiny little stitches after all of this work that we've put in. To finish it, I'm putting the needle through. And before I pull my loops all the way through, I'm going to zoom back through. and tighten that knot, and then come through one more time. Tighten that knot. You see that? Then I'm putting my needle through, and this is gonna hide my thread tails because I don't wanna clip right there at the knot. I'm gonna pull that through, tighten that up, and clip my thread tails up there. So, this is my new power suit. I haven't bought a suit in a long time, and I really am excited to see this all put together. The wide leg pant on my shorter frame can be a little swamping, and so shortening this jacket to me really gives the right overall look, and it makes the jacket pretty versatile. I also plan to wear it over jeans or skinnier dress pants, and this gives me a lot of fun versatility. I can dress it all the way up or dress it all the way down. Thanks so much for joining us on shortening this suit jacket, and don't forget, like, subscribe. See you at the next one.